um, on my way. Uh, which church? The blue one or the yellow one? By the museum. Okay. Okay. When they take her in an ambulance, is it, uh, are they taking her somewhere or just checking her in the ambulance? All right, so Maddie slipped and fell on some stairs and uh, they're taking her to the emergency room. Uh, let's see what's going on. Always an adventure. I feel really bad that I wasn't with her and that I stayed behind to get everything measured because now she's having to deal with this alone. currently took Maddie back to get an x-ray of her ankle and see what's going on there. I don't know, the swelling doesn't look too bad, uh, but there is some swelling. It, from outside of the dentist, view, it doesn't look like it's a broken ankle, but I don't know about the condition of the, the tarsals in her foot. Well, I just had x-rays taken. I don't think it's broken just because it's not very swollen, but um, it's quite painful. <laughs> I uh, was in a museum in a church and I, the floor went down and I just didn't see it. So I stepped down and heard a big old pop and then felt like I was going to faint. <laughs> so, but the ambulance came in like five minutes. So, and luckily I was with a big group of very loving and comforting people. <laughs> we'll see. Getting up into the boat's gonna be a bitch. Yeah. Alright, they're too small. I need to make them bigger. <laughs> Okay, so after the little incident with Maddie's ankle, I'm back in the boat. We didn't come here yesterday, I stayed with Maddie to, in case she needed anything, it was hard for her to move around. So we stayed at our friend's house, but now I'm back at the boat, he dropped me off this morning. So I'm gonna go to Constructora, the, the wood shop, and get the wood that we need. That way I can keep working in the head. Alright, success, back to the boat. While our head is completely torn apart, I thought this would be an excellent opportunity to talk about what is a seacock? What are they for? How do you use them? We currently have a seacock that we're going to be relocating from deep down under the waterline. We're going to bring it up above the waterline. It's the seacock that we use to dump our shower water, and there's really no reason to have it under the waterline. It's just an extra unnecessary hole. So the fewer holes you have, the better you are. Okay, a seacock is nothing more than a valve. It's a really fancy valve. A very secure and safe valve, which is why they're not just called valves, but called seacocks. So what their purpose is, is to open up or shut off the ingress or outflow of water. You need water inside for certain things, like your engine needs cooling, you need water for uh, running your head, like all these different things need water and at the same time other things need to let water out like your galley the sink has to drain somewhere it's going overboard and the seacock is the way it gets overboard safely so the actual fitting that goes through the hall and pops out the other side that is called a through hall for obvious reasons that guy simply lets water in and out there's no stopping it and no controlling it so the problem is say you are going to leave your boat for a long time and you want to shut that off so that the hole's not open. You could either A, swim under your boat and pop a bung into the hole. The easier option is if you could just close a valve, which is what a seacock's for. So normally, the seacock would have a hose that comes off of here and goes to whatever it's needed for, and then it has a valve lever on top. Now, there's two styles. There's this one, which is called a quarter turn seacock, and then there's another style which has a, a little key on it, kind of like a faucet. I don't like the ones with the keys on them because you can't really tell if it's open or closed. This is open when it's in line with the seacock, and when you turn it, it's closed. So you can see when I open the valve, and I'm pulling the lever here, it opens a little hole. So that's all it's doing. 
simply opens or closes this hole in the hall. Now what makes a seacock fancier than just a regular valve? I mean, if you think about it, all they are is a ball valve with a quarter turn lever on them. Same as you find at Home Depot or any place, it's really nothing that fancy. But if the seacock fails, you're gonna sink. There's a hole in your boat and water's gonna gush in and there's no stopping it. One, they're typically made of bronze. If they're made out of plastic, they're made out of some crazy, incredibly strong plastic that's safe and won't break. The second thing is they actually bolt and mount to the hull and are sealed to the hull. So even if the through hull falls off or fails or whatever, the seacock itself is stuck to the side of the boat and sealed. So you won't sink because even if you close it and there's nothing on the other side of it, it's still closed. So water's not gonna make its way in. Here you can see the mounting flange and it's a triangular base that gets bolted into the haw. So it's it's really, really firmly attached here. So say the mushroom on the other side falls off or, or whatever happens, I can close this and this, there's a seal between the seacock that's closed and the haw and that's it. It's sealed, water's not coming in, we're not gonna sink. This thing is flowing salt water. It's so corrosive. A lot of times these suckers are also electrically activated because uh, you can have yours bonded, which is a whole nother thing. Us personally, our boat is not bonded. Just in case you wanted to know and in case you know what that means. There's a lot of wear and tear that can happen on a seacock and a lot is depending on them to work perfectly. So that's why it's good to know what they are, what they're for, and you should check them. Like, just go look at them, and if you're gonna leave your boat for a long time, just close the seacock. We currently have three seacocks in this boat, and we're going to be taking that down to two seacocks, because the fewer seacocks, the fewer issues, and the fewer chances of sinking. Because I know when I was first looking at boats, I thought it was like a bad word or something. I didn't know what people were talking about when they talked about seacocks. So, uh, hopefully this takes the mystery out of them. They tend to be in places that are like dark and tucked away and like just out of sight. So I figured while the head was completely torn apart, this was a great time to show what a seacock is. Okay, so we're going to be taking this seacock off, and if it comes off nicely, I get to reuse it. If it doesn't come off nicely, I have a new one in the mail, so <laughs> solved. hall is completely off and this guy this is what a seacock looks like it's just missing its handle because I didn't put it back on yet what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cover the hole with roving it's really really strong fiberglass that'll be the backing so that way tomorrow or the next day or whenever the weather's good I can grind out the hole and properly fill that seacock or that through hall Once you have the through hole and the seacock out, so now you have a hole in your boat, what you're gonna do is just clean the area. So I'm just wiping it with acetone. Got dust and all sorts of goodies all on here. It's actually pretty gross. So you just wanna clean it really well. You don't have to get it absolutely perfect because this is actually just the layer that's going to help reinforce the next step, which is going to be outside, and that's the one that's actually going to be, you know, watertight and structural and all that stuff. So this is just to make it so that you have a matrix to work against. This isn't the actual final product. What you're going to do, you have your open hole here. You're just going to lay some roving over it. That's all. And then over that, you're going to put some cloth and you don't have to do the cloth the only reason to do the cloth is it helps make it smoother so that way your life is easier later because it's just a smoother surface in here all you're going to do is cover this guy with glass the purpose of this guy is to give you a stop on the inside so that way tomorrow or whenever you get to it you can then grind out the through hole and do all that stuff 
Since this is here and sealed, dust won't come in the boat, so that's plus number one. And plus number two, this is going to be really strong, so it's going to be really strong backing that you can then work against to get a very good layup outside. And you can push all you want, and you don't have to worry about pushing the laminate inside. So all you're going to do is mix up your epoxy, the same as normal, no, no special instructions there. You're just going to mix it up nice and plain. I'm using Fast Set, so it's got a bit of a caramel color here. So there's no additives, no fillers, no nothing. It's just plain resin. And we're just going to paint it onto the surface. So the reason you want to wet the area first is twofold. One, now there's already material, the, there's already resin under this piece of dry cloth that you're going to put on. And two, it helps hold the cloth there. So when you push on it, the wet resin is sticky. So it holds it there. And then your life is easier again because now you can put, pay, uh, put pieces of cloth anywhere and they'll hold put. So this is really good when you're putting fiberglass on vertical surfaces because it'll hold still. As mentioned before, you already have resin under it, so you're partway through the wetting process. Otherwise, you have to saturate the outside so much trying to get all the fibers wet all the way through because if you only wet the outside and the inside stays dry, you're going to have a nice hard shell out here but a poor bond in there. So now we're just putting the cloth over it. And this is just going to make it a lot smoother because roving is pretty rough. And once I get this middle portion covered, I'm going to lay the other cloth down over it. That way it's all well covered and protected. So there it is. Now it's really important to note, this is not structural. This is not going to keep water out. This is only to give you a backing layer so that way when you do the structural part that will be watertight tomorrow after this is cured, you have a backing to work against. That is the only purpose of this layer. So the roving gives you the strength and then the cloth simply makes it smooth. Okay, I got the wood loaded into the boat. Now we gotta get it sorted because this is wood for four different things. Area one, area two, area three, and area four. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is get the boards that belong in this area. Get those planked up here. We're, we're dry fitting everything. So you can do everything except the absolute top point, top piece, and the absolute bottom piece. Both of those pieces are going to be what they call steeler planks. So they're the ones that have to get fitted and trimmed and everything. All the others, they just go on. Okay, so I just got off the phone with Maddie. So the question was gaps or no gaps? And originally I was thinking like a 1 8 inch gap, a teeny tiny. She wanted a half inch gap. That would be like, like that which is so big that you can then see through and then you can see this ugly backside, which I'm trying to have people not see. So instead of doing that one, we're gonna do a 5 16 inch gap, uh, which is still bigger than I was planning, but it'll have the look of gaps, but it won't have the whole void that you can see through. Now the big advantage of a gap is uh, if this wood swells or shrinks or whatever, there's a gap. So there's space for that to happen. If you have all your boards nice and neat, all tucked up like these, and then this one shrinks, well now you're gonna have gaps, but not gaps anywhere else. And then it starts to look kind of funky. Uh, the other issue is if one of them starts to swell, then it's gonna be a ton of pressure. And when you 
you take it off, you're <laughs> gonna get them back on. So it's, that, that's not good. So gaps make life a lot easier. The other nice thing with gaps is they give you airflow and, and all these good stuff. Maddie just called me because apparently with all the heavy rain we've been having, there's flooding in the town. So I'm gonna go check it out. So the Azores get a lot of rain, especially in the winter, which is when they call it the rainy season instead of winter. But today was just insane. It was just coming down like buckets on the boat. So I just stayed in and did some work rather than going out because no point in getting soaked. But apparently it was more rain than they usually get in this time of year. And the main street that we always walk up and down flooded. It turned into a giant mud river. So now the water's obviously gone, I've come out, it's stopped raining. But there's just so much mud and little rocks and just debris strewn on what's usually really clean. So it was, it's a lot of aftermath. And cheese. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Don't even know how to handle this. It stopped raining. Thoughts? I don't know how I'm gonna do this. What do you think? I'm amazed. It looks so good. I'm so excited. This is this is awesome. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to get down the ladder. Instead of getting easier, this whole visa situation is just getting more and more frustrating. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and message us directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.